How's it going everyone? Welcome to day three of our Boxing Day test in Cricket 19. Australia at the crease, two for one. 62 at uh, Stumps on day two, so that's how they'll begin day three. Nathan Lyon in at the middle with David Warner, of course. Lyon, the night watchman, survived the one delivery last night. Protecting, obviously, Steve Smith, who would normally be in at number four. David Warner going along nicely at the moment on 85, not out. So it's been a bit of a quest for him. He's batted well, a little bit aggressive at the start. Then the run rate slowed down and dipped. It's now uh, just over four and over by you know a, mi a minuscule amount after it was a runner ball for the first 11 or 12 overs. So Warner pulls this one away to the boundary. That'll be four runs. And I think uh, Australia, lots of work to do here on day three. They'll probably want to be batting uh, long into the day, of course. Especially with uh, Lyon in there uh, with David Warner. Just hoping that he can stick around for a while and maybe be a little bit of a nuisance here for this New Zealand side. And once he eventually, I suppose, loses his wicket, give an opportunity to a better batsman to come in as David Warner moves to 99. Just one away from that 100, and with this tuck onto the onside, Warner brings up a ton for himself. Australia 2 for 191. It's been a very good innings from David Warner. We saw a lot of it. Explosiveness uh, on day two, 11 fours there in that 100. So it has been uh, a few boundaries in there, but also plenty of singles and twos to get that runs uh, ticking over. And I guess from an Australian point of view, New Zealand making a really big score of uh, 500 plus in their first innings. Australia looking to get as close to they can as that and if not give themselves a lead going into the second innings. They're currently 2 for 200, trailing by a further 320. So there's still so much work to be done. Even with Warner in at the crease on 118, there is plenty of work for them to do. If you have a look at Nathan Lyon at the other end, he's doing a pretty good job as well. He's been at the crease, 51 deliveries. He's probably broken the initial energy spell of the New Zealand bowlers this morning, and uh, especially with Warner piling on the runs. His partnership is worth a hefty amount now. And we'll see in just a moment just how big this partnership is worth. Are they currently at 2 for 242, so it's been a hell of an effort. Lyon been at the crease, 70 deliveries. That's a long time. A very long time. But I hope you guys have been enjoying your little Christmas break uh, as well as your the Boxing Day test as it's going on. I am planning to go on the first day, which has already happened by the time you're seeing this video. But let's quickly have a look at the partnerships here. Two for 255. This partnership between Lion and Warnup worth 101 at the moment. So, 100 run partnership. Lyon contributing 22 of those runs. It has been a lot of David Warner's work this morning as he brings up 150. 17 force, another six boundaries in uh, the last 50 odd runs. He's starting to I think increase that scoring rate again a little bit, or at least increase his boundaries. This Lyon finally gets an edge and it's taken at second slip, I reckon, for a spinner. Mitchell Santner getting the wicket. And after spending 90 deliveries at the crease, Nathan Lyon finally dismissed by New Zealand. They get their third wicket of the Australian innings. 3 for 258 Australia. Now Steve Smith makes his way out to the middle. So Australia three down there still. It's still below, I guess, the 50% mark of uh, what this New Zealand score ended up being of of 330-odd. Still, yeah, still not even halfway through the chase. So Warner still with a bit of work to do. Smith with plenty of work to do since just joining the crease. And as I said, I hope everyone is uh, enjoying your little Christmas break, your little New Year's break. I'm going to be taking a break of making videos early uh, next year. Mostly through January, so throughout December, I've been working very, very hard to make sure that I've got enough content for you guys to see through through all of Jan. I've pretty much done the entirety uh, of the Big Bash season, uh, even now before next year's even started. So all those games already done next year, so you'll be able to see all of those. 
as Australia end that first uh, session on day three at what three for two six four. That's not bad. So yeah, continuing on by talking about my break, I've got plenty of those to go through. Um, I'm probably going to be doing uh, like tier maker lists of every big bash team to, to get some more content going through that uh we've got obviously australia will be taking on india in some odis so there's there's that to look at so even though i'm technically taking a break from making content i have been working so hard over the last six weeks that you guys will still be able to see a stack of content throughout that period as steve smith makes this one and gets out Obviously, we're in the 81st over here now. So, New Zealand have taken that new ball, and it's Trent Bolt getting that early breakthrough. A ripping catch there from BJ Watling, the keeper. It didn't look as though whoever was in first slip, might have been Ross Taylor in first slip, did not look comfortable at all trying to take that catch. Looked like he was running away from it. But a good catch by the keeper, BJ Watling. So, still Australia now four down. I would have liked a bit more out of Steve Smith as. David Warner this time nicking the ball for a couple of runs. So they're creating some chances so far, New Zealand, with this new ball. Already you've seen the edge off the blade of Steve Smith. And now this one from Warner edging through the gap for four. Meanwhile, Travis Head, who has just made his way out to the middle, not more than a couple of overs ago, finds his way to the boundary here. And again... Same shot, same result. 300 up for Australia. Four for 301. After 84.4 overs. That run rate again, is it's now below four. Australia sort of slowing down as the innings progresses. And the wicket of David Warner finally comes. Cross seamer from Wagner just hurries on a little bit. Warner expecting it to swing. It just sort of holds it li its line. And he's out for 175. 25, obviously, short of that 200. And now, all of a sudden, New Zealand in the box seat. They've taken three wickets so far today. And two of those with the new ball, Smith and Warner, now gone. It's been a great start with this new ball. It's now seven overs old. Wagner really doing a good job for the Kiwis. And another edge and taken. So the Kiwis have three new ball wickets. It was certainly going to be the key for them this morning. Well, in the second session of play, Matthew Wade this time going for a duck. Just three balls he spent at the crease before he departs. Australia six for three, 11. They still trail by 227. So I guess their first order of business from... Uh, any sort of perspective. Oh, that's out. Didn't even realise it was. Wagner's got another one. It's Travis Head this time. A little inside edge. Hits the top of the bales. On the off stump. They just swing off. And seven down now, Australia. 312 runs. All their recognised batsmen gone. Tim Payne, I guess, the wicket keeper. Technically a wicket keeper batsman. But uh, without a test match hundred to his name. Still... Plenty of work, I suppose, from an Australian point of view. 90 overs gone. This new ball has really done the trick. And now Australia, they'll be thinking, all right, can we get at least 26 runs? At least get them past the follow-on. And then really they can try and push into this total here, see if the tail can leak out an extra maybe 80-odd runs would be handy for them. You know Pat Cummins can bat. Tim Payne's made a couple of handy half centuries uh, for me, especially in the video game. As we've gone about things, Cummins pulling this away very nicely for four. Outside edge doesn't carry the gully. Sort of more of a leading edge, I suppose. And this time Payne gets a nick. Catch is taken by Ross Taylor. The finger goes up. Sally's got another. Australia eight down. And New Zealand on top. This new ball has done the job for them. It's been a really good start with the new ball. It's it's just been everything they've needed 
to get wickets and, and do the job properly. 14 overs, they've taken five wickets, I suppose, in that time. Australia trailing by 201. As Cummins edges now, and he's out. So Australia still need one more run, or is it two more runs to avoid the follow-on? Wagner's got another one. I think that's four for him. Outside edge of Cummins. He's trying to defend high, and just a little tickle. A little bit of a knock on the edge of the blade. Goes to the keeper. He's out for 10. Australia 9 for 337. James Pattinson, who'd probably normally batted about 8 or 7. Maybe 8 or 9 for Australia. In at number 11, given Nathan Lyon was the night watchman. So Australia, they'll pick up 2 here through Pattinson and avoid the follow-on. That's their first order of business, I suppose. And now... Mitchell Stark, he's not going to hang about at the crease. Hits that one to the boundary for four. So we know both of these guys actually can bat, I suppose, in their right minds. And if they play well enough, Stark, we've seen him. He's just trying to swing big there. 100 overs gone, nine for 359. That's the end of that session. So T on day three. Australia nine for 359. We'll be hoping that Pattinson and Stark can put on... A few runs here. They've already uh, managed to put on 22 between them. Mitchell Stark, 21 of those, or 20-odd of those, has done a reasonable job. Wagner looking for five wickets. Yep. And Pattinson just looking for runs, I suppose. Who, who can bat? He's got a couple of 40s in, in Test Match Cricket. Mitch Stark, we know he's got a 99, and he can pull out uh, plenty of runs on occasion. Very clean striker of the ball, Mitchell Stark. Can hit it to the boundary if he wants to. This one in the air, down the ground. Not quite a real powerful hit, but it's enough to go to the boundary. And I think that this is the, the mentality we're going to see from these two is you don't want to spend a heap of time at the crease because we want to... Oh, that's dropped. That is dropped. Disappointment there for New Zealand. Could have had Australia done and dusted. Now Mitchell Stark playing that one with a square drive. We know he won the game for Australia in Perth with some really high quality bowling. But it has just been... Uh... Oh, that's a clean strike. This time from Pattinson. It's been a good start from these two. Have a look at him. Pattinson 28 from 14. Yes. Mitchell Stark 31 from 33. They're piling runs on and they're piling them on quick for Australia. They've reduced this lead of the Kiwis down to 140. Or even below that, 139. It's so going to run through for a leg by here and 400 up for Australia in a time that looked like they were going to struggle to get that. These two have made some handy runs. Especially when Australia started to lose wickets quickly. Lost five or six very quick wickets with that new ball. And now these two. This partnership worth around about 80. It's Pattinson, 39 from 19. That's T20-like Scott stuff. Striking it over 200. Mitch Stark striking it about 100, but he's hitting it cleanly. That's another four for him. Australia could even get this lead underneath 100 if these two go well enough. Stark picks up a single, brings up a 50 for him. This has been a fantastic last wicket stand. As we've seen me do on a couple of occasions, pull off the quality last wicket stand. This time Pattinson goes, tries to go over cover, can't get it over cover. Is out. Oh, it's actually Stark, not Pattinson, that's out. So Australia all out. No trail by 107. In the end, the Kiwis will be a little disappointed. They dropped, they dropped Stark. He's on about 13 runs or something. And they managed to go about their business very well. Here's some of the highlights of this Mitchell Stark Pattinson innings. It's just a lot of powerful stuff that goes through it. It's a big four there. No sixes, surprisingly. You know, Mitch Stark loves to get those long levers of his and hit a couple of sixes. That's enough highlight looking for me. Let's get into the scores. So an intriguing Australian batting card. Obviously none for 120. Three for 258 at one stage before losing six. 
For about 70. Ended up uh, 9 down for 337 before a 90, 94 run partnership between Mitchell Stark and James Pattinson got Australia up to 431 half centuries for Burns and Stark. Well, David Warner put on a big 150. So what can Australia do? Can they start well here and keep this New Zealand lead as small as possible? Obviously 107. Yep. Their current lead. So you can think of them as none for 107. Australia wouldn't want to chase anything above 300. You'd think in that fourth inning is going to make it real tough. They're going to need to start well with this new ball here yep. to uh, really apply the pressure to the Kiwis in this final session of the day. Yep. This time Jeet Reval putting it into the gap. Both these guys remember making really big scores in that first innings. Jeet Reval making a 90 odd before we saw Tom Latham make 150 yep. odd. There's an edge! And it squirts to the boundary with real pace. Pat Cummins creating that first opportunity. Mitchell Stark has bowled two maidens to begin. So he's applying the pressure. And both these Aussie quicks now doing a lot more pressure building than I guess they had previously in that first innings. New Zealand got off to such a flyer. There was no real pressure on them early days. But the Aussie quicks have bowled much better. Oh, this is close. Could be a run out chance. But they sneak through for one. Oh, that's on the pads of Raval. We know he was out LB in that first innings, but I think it might have just hit him outside the line. Yep. This time he squirts it, driving through the offside, getting it backward of point. They pick up two. They, they'll think about three here, and oh, it's out by a long way. What a throw in the deep from Nathan Lyon. Just a direct hit on the stumps. I think Payne would have taken it cleanly, and they would have been out anyway. But have a look at this. Bang! Not even really in the frame too much. It was a strange decision to run three, but no work required from Payne. Tom Latham goes for eight, and could be a little spark for Australia. They're one for 24, New Zealand. Williamson now to the middle. Yep. Jimmy Pattinson also into the attack now. We know he toiled hard in that first uh, innings. Didn't quite... Grab a wicket. Stark now throwing this one in from the deep. Again, another close call, but they get home safely this time. Edge taken. Wicket. Two for 32. Raval goes. And it's a good start from Australia. You know how hard it was for them to dismiss those two openers in that first innings. A little bit of uneven bounce here. This one just a little bit higher than... What maybe Raval was expecting. And he's out for 18. New Zealand 2 for 32. Ross Taylor making his way to the middle. Australia would love to get one of these two as well tonight. Williamson or Taylor. Both of them really damaging players. And we'll just hang about for New Zealand if they so please. So Australia would love that extra wicket. Probably prefer the captain Williamson. As you see New Zealand's lead at the moment. Up to 139. Australia will be thinking 250, 300 maximum chase. Any more than that's going to be tough. And oh, this has gone onto the stumps. We have seen some strange dismissals. This is one of them. This is definitely uneven bounce. Bounce is much higher. Williamson is expecting. Hits the gloves. Rolls on, hits his shoe and rolls onto the stump. So Pattinson gets his first wicket for the match. Three for 36, New Zealand. Yep. Henry Nichols is now in at the middle with Ross Taylor. And pick up two. Think about three. Oh, gee, the running between wickets here is a nightmare. And Cummins just runs out. Whoever that was, might have been Nichols. Have a look at this. Great throw in from Labashane. Cummins accepts the ball and straight onto the stumps. Just donking it down before throwing it on there again for good measure. Have a look at this. You can see bang right there. Just, just thuds it on. That was very quick. 
Very quick edit. I must have just done it. But he does get get the bales off. I can assure you of that. Anyway, BJ Watling now in. And New Zealand lost four wickets tonight. Four for 39. 12 overs. Australia, they would even love another one now. Could they get five for the night? That would make it a really successful evening. But the game today has progressed very far. So often we see games of test match cricket where it all happens so quickly. You've got a couple of days of solid batting and then the wheel turns and the bowlers take control. And today, after that first session, we've seen what is it, 13 wickets fall. or Maybe not that many. Maybe nine wickets fall since that first session. Again, a huge sort of mix-up in the calling at the crease. You just see the running between wickets. Yep. It's very strange between these two. So we've got maybe a couple of overs left in the day's play. Again, they're calling no this time for Watling and Taylor. And this is now, I think, the last over to be bowled from Mitchell Stark. It's bowled well today. None for 19 from... 5.3 got three deliveries to come in the day's play so come home for three runs last ball of the day Taylor drives it through backward point fielded nicely pick up the one end of the day's play New Zealand four for 72 Leading this game by 178 runs. Have a look at the highlights here of this Australian little innings. Jeet Raval run out. Or maybe, no, it was Latham run out first. Then Raval was caught. Then Williamson saw this odd dismissal of the bold. And then we saw another run out thanks to Patrick Cummins. As we'll see in just a moment here. Very few boundaries from this New Zealand innings. And here was the Nichols run out. Yeah, Cummins. Just grabs it, knocks the bales off instantly, sort of on his follow through. And then he throws the stumps down again after that, but it didn't matter because it was enough to dismiss Henry Nichols with the bales already off. So New Zealand, four for 72. at stumps here on day three. Got a big enough lead to see them uh, in pole position. A couple of runouts today, as well as wickets for Cummins and Pattinson. But uh, let's look at that overall score and see where things really sit. So it's New Zealand leading by 179 runs in the second innings as we head into day four. Ross Taylor in at the crease with BJ Watling for the Kiwis as they look to set a target for Australia that they can't reach. So we'll see how that plays out on day four. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.